Hello folks, welcome back to Let's Play AGEOD's Civil War. Uh, we're getting towards the end of this game here, but we still have some problems to deal with. I'll start down here in the south. Hooker is continuing to move towards Mobile, and I think over the last few turns I was playing a bit sloppy. We didn't really notice that we lost Meridian, um, which was undefended, so the Confederates just waltzed in there. So I'm sending Grierson and his cavalry back to the Meridian, hopefully to take it back. Hopefully it's not terribly well defended. If it is well defended, we'll find out and maybe we'll send Hooker back to retake it. Um, that's what's going on down here. Lion is continuing to uh, rest and refit after his defeat at New Orleans. Um, really, these two divisions are just about back in shape and John Wilder's back in shape and we're just waiting for Curtis's division to uh, get all of his replacements. Um, and I'm not sure what we're going to do. I think this is basically the division that defeated us in New Orleans. So if he stays out of New Orleans, then maybe Lyon can assault there again. Um, <laughs> and maybe finally get his promotion. We'll see. Anyway, uh, all's quiet here in uh, Missouri. Let's see. Here's Blunt. Oh, he's, he's active. So let's send him chasing that guy. Uh, all's quiet here in Kentucky, and I think I'll keep things quiet here until the new core arrives, which is being formed here in Washington, D.C., in a turn or two. Uh, Hamilton is besieging Petersburg. Looks like we trapped a good division there. So I'll let him rest a turn or two, see if we can't get a breach, and then I'll let him assault. And I think that's all that's going on. So let me pause it and run the inner turn and let you know what happens. Well, this is great news. Looks like Grierson took Meridian back. At least he won a victory there. Only lost 61 men and uh, took out 615 of them. Well, uh, let's pause it and see what else happens. Okay, folks, I'm back. Uh, here we are on the next turn. And uh, let's start down here in the south where things are most interesting. If I hover over Mobile, Alabama, I'm uh, pretty surprised. There's a very large force in there under John Hood. Power 1,274, which is just around the power Lion has right now. Um, and Hooker, both big, both of them have power around 1,200, so I'm not going to be able to crack that. Um, but what I did notice in that last battle, I think it was over here, where Hooker uh, took on and, and took out a force of about 5,000 men, Hooker became promotable. That's great news. He's going to become a three-star general, and I can give him the army headquarters uh, that's sitting over here with Lyon. Furthermore, one of his uh, division commanders, this guy who's actually his least senior division commander, has also become promotable. Uh, so he'll become a two-star. So I'm going to promote them both, even though promoting them both will give me... Um, pretty big hits in morale and victory points. Uh, two national morale and something like 130 victory points I'm going to lose by doing this. But the result will be a three star and a two star, finally, in this theater. So after these guys are done promoting, and I'm going to give them a little rest in this area. I'm going to railroad them all the way back here to Springfield, where we're going to reorganize, reorganize ourselves into an army and a corps. I'll probably end up giving Lion uh, Runyon's old division. When I've done that, then we'll really be able to turn and maybe we'll first try to take on uh, this division here. We'll, we'll take New Orleans back. We'll try to take this division here. I think I may give up all this land for a while. I'll give Meridian back. I'll give Jackson back. I may even let him take Vicksburg back. I'll pull all the way back here and with my uh, units reorganized, I now should be able to really stand up really good battles and uh, take out the Confederate armies which are defending this area and make my life a lot more easier in moving in towards Mobile. So uh, that's my plan. It's going to prolong this game a little bit more, but hey, it's only early 1864. We got into another two years of the war to play with if we wanted to. So these videos are going to go on a little while longer while I do that, but I think it's a smart thing to do. And you guys, of course, can stop watching at any point if any if anybody actually got this far in the videos. This is a um, lot of videos <laughs> I've posted so far to play this game. Okay, so that's the South. That's what I'm doing. Giving them a rest, I'm promoting them, and letting Lion continue to recover. Uh, nothing interesting, I think, going on in Missouri. 
um, leaving the folks in Kentucky as they are. The seven divisions, here they are, are now on their way into Cincinnati. Uh, ooh, that reminds me, I should give them a two-star just to make sure. Uh, how about Whipple? Just to make sure that uh, they have a core commander available. And I'll also give them those special units. So that's what's going on in Kentucky. Down here, uh, the Petersburg force under Robert E. Lee now has a power of 812. Uh, so Hamilton here has a power of 2200, but I'm sending Crittenden down to join him. And I'm um, moving uh, Rosecrans up here to Fredericksburg. So hopefully from Fredericksburg, Rosecrans blue area, maybe it won't. Maybe I should send him to Richmond. Let's see. If I railroad him, let's send Rosecrans to Richmond, just to be sure that uh, we're within Rosecrans' area of effect, and these two corps in Petersburg will be able to uh, support each other as we go to assault Petersburg fairly soon. Uh, let's see. I'm taking Carney's corps and moving him to Manassas, so I'll still have decent defenses in the Washington, D.C. area. Uh, all right, that's it for this turn. It looks like I got to buy a lot more railroad points because I'm using a lot. But I have so many resources at this point; it's not a big deal. All right, I'm going to pause it, run the other turn, let you know what happens. Okay, here we are in the next turn. Uh, I'm going to assault Petersburg next turn. Oh, it looks like the structure is still intact. So let's continue to besiege it and wait till we have a uh, breach there. The divisions are still on their way to Cincinnati the new divisions. Uh, the snow is still on the ground, so it looks like we'll be creating that new core in Kentucky just as the snow is lifting, and uh, we'll be able to start these guys marching south and maybe towards Chattanooga very soon. And here in the deep south, um, this general here has interposed himself on my railway line back to Springfield, so I'm having Hooker go to that area in attack mode. I'm having Grierson join Hooker, uh, so hopefully Hooker, whose cohesion is still a little bit low, but uh, can push that guy out of there. And next turn, we'll have everybody gather in Springfield and we'll organize our armies there. So those are all my moves for this turn. I don't think there's anything else going on anywhere else. I have Blunt moving down here to uh, Lawrence to take that back. Uh, yeah, I think that's it for this turn. Let me do the inner turn and I'll let you know what happens. Okay, next turn, real quick, the uh, Siege of Petersburg continues, I guess just as it did in real life, there's still no breach there. Uh, somehow I think these two core are not getting supply, if I hover over them, their supply levels aren't full. So I'm sending them each one full uh, supply wagon for, that I had in reserve in Washington, D.C. Uh, to fill those guys up. I'm also sending Lou Wallace a supply wagon because I noticed he only had one, but he's sitting on top of a uh, depot, so he's in no danger. But hopefully by sending these guys two full supply wagons, we can make it one more turn, and hopefully we'll get a uh, breach in their defenses and can assault next turn. Uh, in Kentucky, in very eastern Kentucky, this huge stack of brigades is uh, moving up in eastern Kentucky, and I don't know what he's going to do, but I have two corps here in uh, Cincinnati, one under Sherman and one under Whipple, the one that just arrived, uh, ready to take care of him. So I'm sort of hoping he'll move up into Ohio so I can go ahead and smash him, but uh, we'll see what he does. Over here, uh, I'm leaving Thomas in Nashville, but uh, a couple of small divisions popped up next to Fort Henry Donaldson and Pope happens to be active this turn, so I'm going to move him over one uh, area and let him attack that guy, see if we can't uh, get a victory there. And finally here in the Deep South, I'm crashing everybody down to Springfield so we can reorganize our armies next turn. I'm fairly excited about this prospect. Uh, it, it's been frustrating not getting promotions for so long, but uh, so the prospect of having an army and a corps down here is, is exciting to me, so I'm looking forward to next turn and getting that organized. All right, let me pause it and uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, here we are in the next turn, and I think this should be pretty exciting. We never managed to get a breach in Petersburg, but uh, inside Petersburg is 
uh, who's WHFE? That's not what Robert E. Lee, that's somebody else. Anyway, um, only power 534, and we have power something like almost 5,000 uh, outside. Plus, I have keys moving into the adjacent region. So I'm going to go ahead and assault him, even though there's no breach, even though he's well dug in. Let's see if we can't take Petersburg. Uh, here, that large force I was pointing out in eastern Kentucky earlier seems to have holding itself up in Ironton, so I'm sending both Sherman and Whipple's Corps there to try to take care of that. Uh, let's see. Pope is active and uh, uh, in position to take Humboldt. There's only a small militia unit there. There's Confederates north of his position. Maybe if we take that, they'll have to move south to worry about him, and we can fight a defensive battle there. So hopefully we'll take Humboldt next turn. And here in the south, check this out. We have an army, and we have a core. It's pretty exciting, isn't it? Um, for some reason, Hooker's army, and I can't really tell why, still has a 5% penalty, even though the core has a 0% penalty, each of them with four divisions. Uh, I don't know why that is, so I pulled Grierson out. Uh, he can be his own uh, unit. He's a cavalry unit anyway, so it's nice to have him running around. And we're going to uh, assault New Orleans. Now we should have uh, uh, enough power to take New Orleans and do something about these armies in the area. So here, I'll pause it. We'll do the inner turn. This should be a little exciting. Let's find out what happens. All right, huge victory at Petersburg. Uh, we attacked with 70,000 men. They had 11,000 defending, and they lost them to a man. Uh, we lost 3,500 uh, men of our own. But I think this was worth it. You can see it was really our cannon did most of the work, but during the assault, we really uh, did a job on them, too. Okay, so this is wonderful for us. Let's pause it and see what else happens. As expected, Pope took Humboldt. This is nice. It's on the way to Memphis, so uh, taking Memphis, Tennessee would be a pretty good one for us. Here, let me pause it and see what else is going on. All right, we had a battle in New Orleans. Looks like it came out as a stalemate. Uh, so our 67,000 troops butted against 15,000 under price. And it looks like casualties were even. They lost a smidge more than us. But uh, well, let's see what happens after this. Maybe there'll be another battle. I don't know. Well, in Ironton, it looks like that large stack that we were trying to trap there must have snuck out because there were only a thousand men there. Uh, we got ourselves a victory with no casualties, so uh, that's good, but I wonder where that big stack went. We'll find out in a sec. All right, that's it for that turn. Petersburg is ours. It looked to me like New Orleans is besieged, so that's good news. The uh, Confederate morale is down to 39, and we win if it drops to 25 or below. So we're almost there. I'll have to end this video here. Uh, maybe we can get rid of that last 14 of Confederate morale next video. But you've heard me say that before, so uh, no guarantees. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Hope you enjoyed this.